Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about, yes, getting a job. And we live in an unprecedented time, and I'll tell you why here in a moment. But we're going to give you the skills, the applications, the resumes, the cover letters, job search, and how to find the 75% jobs that are not advertised. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Talking to you tonight about how to find a job and my friend, uh, oh I can't go to the top anymore, what's going on here? Anyway, Mallory's here, Jim Bob's here, Carlton, Carlta, Carlita is here, uh, Goose, my friend, job just over broke, yeah, that's unfortunately for a lot of people who are locked down with COVID and those types of things, that's probably true. Uh, Rocky's here from Windsor, Ontario, it's nice talking to everybody. My friend Sat Ann was here as well earlier. Uh, Sat Ann is one of the early smart drivers on the channel. He was originally from Russia, I believe it was Siberia, learned English and then got a job driving truck. That was his goal, to get a job driving truck and he's driving truck in Eastern Europe. So he was here previously but I don't see the comment now. Alright, so busy week, lots going on. <laughs> you know, uh, saw a video over on Facebook about brakes failing on cars and we all know that brakes will not fail on cars because there's backup there's two backup systems on cars uh, which kind of annoyed me a little bit uh, and Jim Bob wants to be a firefighter uh, when he grows up and that is very doable DC is here my friend as well uh, the reason I said in the introduction that we live in an unprecedented time and for all of you that are here in the town or city where you live or the area region where you live are they advertising for jobs because here where I live they are now advertising for jobs there's a job posting on just about every storefront as well as there's a lot of places that are now advertising on the radio as well for help so just let me know down in the comments if that's what they're doing uh, because like I said that's unprecedented in my lifetime it's never I've never seen that uh, Corey's here. Uh, Corey is uh, Bricks for Wheels. He's the moderator. Corey does an excellent job of keeping out the bad people and putting up uh, videos that I recommend that you have another look at for more detail on whatever questions you're talking about. And my friend Margaret is here from Brooklyn as well. So without further ado, uh, PowerPoint presentation. We'll find that. <laughs> it's here somewhere. I'm a little slideshow. There we go. I'm going to find the right button. Permaculture, hello my friend, how are you? All right, so getting going here on the presentation, getting a job, you need work, uh, and these, it's not just for truck drivers that I'm talking about, I'm talking about everybody that needs to get a job, uh, because we all need to find jobs in our lifetime. And Margaret says, the only job listings here are for DoorDash, Delivery, and Amazon Warehouse. Interesting. Uh, KS, I want to be a bus driver or Amazon driver. Okay, that's very doable. And Goose says, I can't wait to get back to teaching as I've worked a total of nine days this year. That is just crazy. Uh, Paco, hi Rick, I just got fired and in need of some money. I only have my phone left. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so hopefully we can help you out. And that's a bit disturbing for Margaret that she's saying that it's only DoorDash delivery and Amazon warehouse that are advertising for jobs. There's lots of places here that are advertising for jobs. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute here. Okay, so getting a job. That's what we're talking about, resume skills, applications, how to find the 75% of jobs that are not advertised. All right, so those of you who may be new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a truck driver during the 1990s, uh, drove from Canada into the United States, mostly east of the Mississippi, but I did make it into Texas and uh, made it to California a couple times, Utah, or not Utah rather, but Washington State and Oregon. So, did make it out west a couple of times. The western states, I guess they're called. <laughs> 2006, I graduated with a doctorate in legal history from the University of Melbourne in Australia. And legal history, for those of you who may or may not know, is the study of policing, courts, and prisons. My expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. While I was going to university, going to university, I drove buses for Greyhound and some of the regional bus lines there as well. So, I had bus and coach experience. And in 2015, I started the YouTube channel and the online business. 
and it's been wildly more successful than I ever could have imagined. It's definitely one of those things where dreams happen for sure. And if you want to know more about me and the Smart Drive Test channel, uh, you can check that out over at the Smart Drive Test website, the autobiography over there. And hit the right button here on the keyboard. New video this week, driving with a disability. Uh, on a recent trip here during March break, went to Calgary and I caught up with Nelson Shadenuf. He is the owner of South, South Trail Driving School in Calgary. And Nelson has a vehicle that is fitted with hand controls for people with disabilities. He also has a left driving, uh, not a left driving, but a left gas pedal in the vehicle, which is very weird. I've never had one of those before. That's a little bit uh, interesting to get used to. Uh, and uh, definitely hand controls and people, if you have some sort of disability, you've, you've lost a limb, you're a paraplegic or uh, had a, suffered a stroke, then this vehicle is for you and this information is for you. And for those of you who, who don't have a disability but want to see how to drive a vehicle with hand controls and those types of things, this is definitely the video you want to definitely have a look at. All right, so head over to the Smart Drive Test website as well. Corey will put the link up for you on getting past your driver's test first time checklist. Okay, you can have that. And so finding a job, what kind of job do you want? This is the first thing you got to kind of sit down and do. What do you want to do? And some years ago, uh, when I was working in London, Ontario in the late 1990s, couldn't find a job, had gone and got my driving instructor's license, but you know, just could not find a job. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't need, know that I needed to sort of sit down and really hone in on what I wanted for a job. You know, as a couple of people here said they want to be bus drivers, what kind of bus driver do you want to be? Do you want to drive tour coaches? Do you want to drive transit buses? Do you want to drive for Greyhound and those types of things? So be very specific about the kind of job that you want. Do you want to drive a delivery van for Amazon? Do you want to DoorDash? You know, the these third-party companies that have now sprung up and doing delivery for restaurants and whatnot. Okay, because if you're looking for a job in everything and you just plaster out a resume that says, I will do anything, unfortunately, you're not going to get anything if that happens because you have to be specific. You have to do the work of what you want to do in order to get the job that you want. And that's your first step. And the way that you do this is you sit down with the internet go to the library if you don't have access to a computer and those types of things the libraries are open for using research and whatnot uh, you know talk to people in the profession people who are already doing it and then informational interviews find people that are already doing the job and ask them listen can I have 15 or 20 minutes of your time and go and ask them questions about the work that they do and what they uh, are not doing and you know what they like about the job and what they don't like what the pros are what the cons are what the hours are that they work how much money do they make and those types of things all right uh and you know is there job flexibility because a lot of us have families we have other commitments and those types of things so we need all of that uh with our jobs and if you want to look at a really a couple of really great books in terms of changing careers and finding jobs uh, Jack Canfield's The Success Principle, and then What Color Is Your Parachute? And those two will give you information that you can work through to be able to hone in on the job that you want or the career that you want in order to move forward with your life or change your life. All right, so how do you get there, okay? You know, how do you get to the job you want? How do you get to the profession that you want? Because it's not just going to be right there in front of you, right? Uh, sometimes you're going to have to go back to school, you're going to have to go to vocational school, especially if you want to be a plumber, you want to be an electrician, uh, you want to be uh, a carpenter or those types of things, you're going to have to go to vocational school. Uh, myself, uh, I went back to university in my 30s uh, and pursued a doctorate degree. Uh, you might have to get more certi certifications. Uh, you may need to go to a training school. For example, when I got my driving instructor license, I had to go to Toronto and I had to go to the Ontario Safety League to get my driving instructor license. And then Goose, of course, he had to get his driving instructor's license. I don't know where uh, he got his, but uh, you know, these are the things that you need to look at. Do I need to do on-the-job training? Do I need to do an internship? Do I need to go back to school, to college or university? Or do I need to go to a trade school or those types of things? to pursue the job that you want to do. All right, and then 
the other thing that you need to realize is that when you're looking for a job, you are selling an asset. That asset is you. <laughs> a company is going to hire you because you are going to make them money. Yes, that's the reality of the situation, but the reality is, is that if they're going to pay you fifty or $60,000 a year to do a certain amount of work, that company expects a dividend in addition to the amount of work that you're doing. So you have to prove to them that you can do the work. And I'll let you in on a little secret. It's really not about you doing the work for the company. It's the fact that you can assure them that you are going to show up and do the work, in fact, because there's a lot of places <laughs> that have difficulty getting employers simply to show up to their job. Uh, and I mean, if you ask any manager, probably at Walmart or McDonald's or any other, you know, box store organization, Home Depot and those types of things, you're going to find out that they have a, a huge difficulty in getting uh, personnel just to show up to work, let alone actually getting them to do the work. Okay. So where do you find the jobs? After you figured out what you want to do in terms of your job, then you have to figure out where these jobs are located. And there's lots of places that you can look online, uh, local advertising, uh, advertising boards, uh, here in where I live, it's Castanet, it's Kijiji, Craigslist. There are job listings on all of these postings. Go to the company website. For example, if you want to work for McDonald's, go to the McDonald's website. If you want to work for Walmart, you go to the Walmart website and look up what job postings they have there. And then the last two are going to really tap into the 75% of jobs that aren't advertised networking and cold calling so you're when you're looking for a job you talk to everybody that is within your three foot circle so if, well obviously right not right now in covid but the, your six foot circle your two meter circle <laughs> you talk to those people and you say listen i'm looking for a job i want to be a transit bus driver do you know anybody that i can talk to or anybody that might be able to help me out or anybody that's hiring Okay, you have to be very bold, you have to be very brazen, you have to approach people, you have to talk to people because that's how you're going to get it. You need to uh, do cold calling, uh, you need to pick up the phone, you need to call people, you need to talk to them, you need to show up at the company at the business and you need to knock on the door and you need to talk to these people. I know that all of that's going to be much more challenging now that we're living in this world of uh, the pandemic, but you can cold call people, okay? So one of the challenges is going to be getting past the gatekeeper. For example, those of you who want to work for transit companies, you're going to have to talk to the operations manager. The operations manager is the person that's going to be responsible for hiring. And with any other company, whatever other job you want to do, if you want to be a manager at Walmart, you have to get past the gatekeeper. And generally, that's going to be the HR department, the human resources department. You have to get past them because they're not the people that are going to be doing the hiring. The manager at the store is probably the person for Walmart that's going to be doing the hiring. You have to figure out who that person is and you have to get in touch with that person. So one of the things you want to do is if you're going to cold call is you want to rehearse, you want to introduce yourself. And after you introduce yourself and you say, hello, my name is Rick August. I'm looking for a job as a, uh, as a, a salesperson in the jewelry department at Walmart, there's going to be dead silence. And it's disconcerting when there's silence on the phone because now you got to kind of launch into your little spiel. So make sure that you rehearse your spiel because it's going to be very, it's going to put you off when there's silence on the other end of the phone. So make sure that you do that. Okay, you give your little spiel. They say at the end, um, do you have any positions available? Do you have anything coming up? And they say to you, no, we don't have anything. Okay, don't say thank you very much and hang up the phone. That's not going to work for you. you. You need to understand that the people that you're talking to in these positions are also going to know anybody else who might be able to hire you. So listen, you say to them, uh, do you know anybody else who might be hiring? They'll give you a couple of references and then you say, listen, can I phone you back in four to five weeks? And most of the time they're going to say yes and you say thank you very much. Uh, and you hang up and you take down those references and you make sure you call these other people, whoever, and you make sure you follow up. Okay, so people are busy. If people don't talk to you or people don't get back to you, if you leave a message because you need to leave a phone message or you need to send a text message or whatnot, 
people are not going to be offended uh, if you send them a reminder email. I'm not offended because I'm especially busy and I stuff gets lost in the slush pile, the emails, the hundreds of emails I get a day or contacts through Facebook and whatnot. So when you're sending an, when you're cold calling, when you're sending your resume or application in without a job posting available, you are doing these people a favor because they are extremely busy and there is nothing worse than a manager being told, listen, you gotta hire two people for this department and they're just like, oh my God, this is just something else I have to do in my day. Because you have to understand that managers manage fires. They put out and solve, they put out fires and they solve problems. And when you add this task on top of everything else that they're already doing in the day, they're just like, oh my God, please don't. And if you come along and you put your resume in at that time and you say, listen, I can do this work and this is exactly what I want to do, then they're, they're going to be so happy <laughs> because you're already there and you already fit, you already tick off all the check boxes and those types of things. And they're just going to like, yeah, they're just going to come in and interview you. And you're, if you, you know, if you've got all the boxes checked, you're probably going to get hired because you're doing them a favor. So this is how you want to stay out of this slush pile. Because once they put the advertising out and it's any kind of desirable job, then it's too late. It's way too late for you because they're going to get three or 400 resumes and then they have to go through these things. Okay. So resume cover, thank you letters. So the resumes, if you don't know how to do a resume, pay somebody on Fiverr or some other service, 10 or 20 bucks and get them to type it up for you. Uh, you can see here on this resume at the top that they've got their one line after another for their address. Don't do that. Just put it all on one line here. And as well, Corey will put the link up for you over to the Smart Drive Test website. I have an example of this over there. If you have to fill out a job application, take two copies of it. Make sure you have your resume. What you can do is get a job application. You can have it filled out. And then that way, if you go into the company and they need you to fill out a job application, you can just take the one you already have and then just copy the information over to the application that they want you to use. All right. Uh, in most job applications that you're going to submit your resume and whatnot, you want to have a cover letter with it. And again, there's an example of a cover letter over at the Smart Drive Test website. Uh, reference letters, don't include your reference letters. Uh, if they do call you in for a resume, then supply your reference letters uh, from references and those types of things. And if you are going to call your references, make sure that you give your references a heads up, send them a copy of your resume. Uh, <coughs> excuse me because you know oftentimes I will serve as a reference for somebody but I want to see their resume as well so I can speak to those points if the company in fact does call me uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to send a quick short thank you email for them taking the time to consider your application and those types of things and I'll tell you why it's important to send a thank you letter because I have got job interviews because of the thank you letters <laughs> because it sets you apart from the slush pile it takes you out of the slush pile and now they're kind of like oh wait this person here actually sent a thank you letter and went that kind of extra step so it does they do very much work okay keep track of your applications and calls set reminders for yourself to do follow-up calls okay if you uh, fall down on this it's if you fall down on this uh, aspect it's all for naught so remember not following up on an application that you've put in is tantamount to celebrating before you cross the uh, the finish line in a marathon. You're you're not going to win the race. You're going to come in second. And when you come in second in terms of a job application, that often means that you're not going to get the job. All right. So when you call, when you follow up, be polite. Ask if you can follow up again in the next week. Those types of things and whatnot. So make sure that you follow up. All right, so there's going to be uh, an interview process. If you do make it past the slush pile, they're going to have a short list. You're going to make it on the short list. There's going to be four or five people that are going to be interviewed. Uh, ask questions like how many people are going to be on the panel that are going to interview? Is it going to be one person? Is it going to be two people, three people, five people? Because you walk into a room and you're expecting one person to interview you and then it's three or four people. That can be very intimidating and it can kind of throw you off your game. Okay, so 
ask if you should bring anything to the interview, ask if there's going to be a second interview, how long before they contact you, and you know, if you don't get the job and they inform you of that, unfortunately, then ask if there's going to be a debrief and whatnot, okay? So ask all of those questions uh, when you go in for your job interview. So good luck on that, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, so we'll drop back over here and excellent. Corey's put those links up for you. Thank you very much for that, Corey, putting, doing that. Uh, Goose said he got his uh, driving instructor's license at Centennial College in 1991. Uh, Goose, where is Centennial College there in Ontario? I'm not sure where it is. Uh, Margaret says, for city and state municipal bus and transit jobs, you have to look at the city uh, state website to see when the exams are scheduled. Uh, for those jobs. So this is part of the process as Margaret says uh, is that you have to see when the exams are scheduled. So when you're talking about exams Margaret are you talking about that they have an exam set that that kind of filters people through the process of getting a job because for other people uh, people that want to do this you're gonna have to be aware of what the hiring process is in order to work for the city, to work for the transit bus drivers, you know, and the other thing you want to figure out when you're doing your research for the job that you want is what qualifications do I need? Okay, if I go and get my air brake ticket, if I go and get my CDL license, is that going to set me ahead of the other applicants? Or, for example, what Margaret's talking about in Brooklyn there, if you're working for the local transit authority, do, are they going to train you? So you don't need any of that. They just want to know whether you have uh, frontline experience in working with customers. And if you can work with customers, then they'll hire you and train you as a driver. And that's what I, the question I'm asking. Blessed, my friend, how are you? Aloha. Uh, I hope you and the family are doing well, but saw your live stream on how to find a job. I was working at this beverage place for 12 years. Sad to say I got let go because of the pandemic. Oh, I'm sorry to say that, blessed. Yeah, a lot of people, unfortunately, have lost their jobs, and it's really unfortunate. And we're in lockdown here, again, in the province of British Columbia. Most of, most of Ontario, Ontario's on lockdown again, and, you know, when lockdown, there's no, there's no indoor dining at all of the restaurants. Now, fortunately, it is spring here, and many of the establishments have opened up patios, so you can sit outside. It's still a little bit chilly here, but you can do that. Uh, so Goose says Centennial College is in North York. Okay, that's kind of what I thought it was in Toronto there, but I wasn't sure. Uh, Margaret's exams for city bus driver, exams for train maintenance, exams for repair technicians. Okay, so I'm assuming, Margaret, that that's the first step uh, to apply to be uh, to get one of those jobs there uh, in Brooklyn or in New York or the, uh, any of the other boroughs there in the city. Uh, Jim Bob, uh, Rick, I think Centennial College is in... Uh, no, it's not in Colorado, Jim Bobby. It's, it's actually in Canada there. Goose, I used to hit the yellow pages in cold call business from A to Z a long time ago. I ended up getting a job uh, in the T category. Yellow persistence pays off. And, that, and that's very true, Goose. Uh, it's the same thing. You know, there's a few things in my life, courses that I've taken that have been lifelong uh, skills that I've used through my life. And, you know, uh, one of them was learning how to type, taking typing in high school. Don't ask me why I took typing for three years. Uh, it wasn't called typing at that time. It was called, you know, secretarial. By the time you got to grade 11, it was secretarial. N little did I know that I would spend my whole life on a computer keyboarding every day. Uh, the second one was how to find a job. You know, I was out of work in the late 1990s. I just got my driving instructor's license, which is weird in Ontario because you become certified to teach people how to drive truck but you are licensed to teach people how to drive a car. And because I did it backwards and got my certification to teach people how to drive truck, I couldn't get a job because I was only certified. I wasn't licensed as a driving instructor, which I found out later and then went back and got my, my license. So finding this job, and I was in London, Ontario, and it was one of the community services, uh, you know, social services that teach you how to find jobs and have job boards and those types of things. And I signed up for this. And it was an eight-week course. You had to show up every day from nine to five. You had to dress up, you know, and you went in. And there was motivational stuff. This Jack Canfield stuff. This, this was, and you know, this was the late 1990s. So this was uh, 25 years ago now. And you know, Jack Canfield was there and was telling his motivational stories. And was like, yeah, this is really awesome. 
and uh, you know we we learned how to do resumes we learned how to do cover letters they showed us how to do cold calling and one of the things you had to do every day was you had to spend an hour and a half as part of the course on the phone making cold calls and I was making cold calls to all these trucking companies and transit authorities and those types of things looking for a job as a safety officer because at that time that's what I wanted to do work as a safety officer and of course you know on the list came up the London Transit Authority and called the London Transit Authority thinking you know this probably isn't going to work out like so many things as as Goose said you know it's persistence you get a job in the T's right and uh, called them up and the other thing that you do when you're looking for a job is when you call them up and you say blah 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 you say listen can I drop my resume off and they'll say yes you can and okay so who am I gonna drop my resume off and you know it was Tom Smith he was the operations manager so I, I get dressed up I go down to the London Transit Authority he's in a meeting and so I said to the uh, the receptionist behind the counter I said listen can I wait I waited two and a half hours for Mr. Smith to come out to give him my resume you know had the little two minute you know kind of mini interview I uh, talked to him, said, you know, this is what I'm doing, this is who I am, and uh, they called me up the next day and said, listen, we've got some work we would like you to do. Uh, it was the time in the late 1980s when the low floor buses were coming in for people with disabilities, people in wheelchairs and those types of things, and they wanted me to create a curriculum for them that would teach their drivers how to put the restraining devices on people with wheelchairs on public transit and how to teach drivers to deal with people with disabilities. So that's what I did in the late 1990s. And I, you know, I got an eight week contract out of that. And at that time it was $8,000, which was, you know, a fair bit of money. So, uh, it all worked out well. And, uh, you know, I got a bit of work, but you know, the skills have proved useful through the rest of my time. And, you know, when I finished university, I kind of thought, oh, the, the, the skies will part, a manna will fall from heaven, blah, blah, blah. Uh, none of that happened. And, uh, you know, I was living in Australia. I was looking for a job as a university professor. And basically, kind of like what Goose said, you know, I started on the East Coast in at Memorial University in, in Newfoundland. And I started working West. And, you know, by the time I got to Ontario... And as some of you may or may not know, Ontario is a little bit like the Eastern Seaboard in the Ivory, uh, not the Ivory, the Ivy League schools. Uh, there's a lot of universities in Ontario. It's a it's a big province. 12 million people live in Ontario. It's you know not anything compared to California or Texas, but there's a lot of universities there. And finally, I got to one of the universities. Was talking to the chair of the history department and uh, sent him my resume and those sorts of things. And he sent me an email the next day of a job posting here in British Columbia. And he said, oh, you might be interested in this. And I got a job in British Columbia here teaching at one of the universities here. So you got to be persistent and you just keep going through the alphabet looking for a job. So that's the other, the other important point of all of that is, is that before you hang up the phone, you say to the person on the phone, can I drop off my resume and it's a two minute mini interview that you're gonna get because you're dressed up, you hand them your resume, you talk to them, you do that little bit of small talk, you tell them this is what I'm doing, uh, this is the kind of work that I'm looking for and you know, it puts a face to your resume uh, and I know that's a little bit tougher now with COVID and those types of things but there's ways of doing it, you know. Uh, you know, create a web page. you know, make a video. <laughs> Post it on all your social media accounts. Uh, put it, put a link to it on your resume so that they can see you and they can get a face, right? Because uh, let me tell you, if I'm interested in a, you know, I get a PDF and it's got a hyperlink on it that goes to a video of who you are and what you do and the kind of work that you've done and you do kind of a little visual uh, on who you are as a person and selling yourself, that's really, really going to set you out from the crowd, okay? Uh, Mallory, I got my job at Shoppers Drug Mart in October 2006. I'm not working right now due to the pandemic. I've been off work for almost 13 or almost 14 months. Yeah, and I'm sorry to hear that, Mallory. That's just really tough for a lot of people, for sure. Uh, yeah, and as Goose said, yeah, definitely stand out. And that's definitely what you want to do, right? And uh, Jay, hey, how are you? You're not really late, my friend. Always good to see you. Okay, uh, Rocky, uh, I thought cold calling only in the winter would mean like silence, technical difficulties due to the winter, other things like that. Would that be right or no? 
Uh, Rocky, no, that's not that's not right. Right, cold calling means that you just call somebody up and you start talking to them on the phone about finding a job. And as I said to you, uh, you know, as soon as you say who you are and what you're on the phone for, you say I'm looking for a job as a cashier at Walmart. Uh, there, there is probably going to be silence on the other end of the phone. It's the same thing for truck drivers, CDL drivers who are looking for work as a new driver. If you call up a trucking company and you say, listen, I just got my license from uh, truck driving school. I want to get a job as a truck driver. I want to run long haul. There's going to be silence on the other end of the phone. They're, they want to know who you are. They want to know what your transferable skills are. So it's incredibly important for you to rehearse <laughs> your spiel that you're going to deliver to them because it's going to put you off. It even puts me off when I do that and I've done that in the past and I'm cold calling. I'm just talking to somebody right you know, out of the blue and trying to sell my skills and abilities, right? But there are ways you can do it. There's ways that you got to move forward with it. And, you know, it's not always going to work out right away. You really kind of, kind of, you know, go through the process. You got to do the little mini interview. Can I come down and drop off my resume? You have to say to them, listen, do you know anybody else that might be hiring for these positions? And oftentimes these people know, you know, if there's a, uh, you know, one operations manager at the transit authority, they're going to know the operations manager that works at the Greyhound station. They're going to know the operations manager that does the uh, coach tours and they'll know these people or they'll know somebody else and they'll, or they'll say, listen, you know, I know my brother-in-law works at a company and uh, he was talking about somebody else that was looking for somebody to work and, you know, get in touch with him and see what he says. And this is part of your networking of talking to everybody because you don't know who knows somebody. And it's kind of that six degrees of separation, right? <laughs> it may not be the first person that you talk to, but it might be that next person or the third person down the line that may be able to get you a job. So just everybody within your six feet circle, just start talking to them and saying, listen, I'm looking for a job as a transit bus driver. Do you know anybody that might be hiring? All right. Uh, Mallory will be going back to work once the pandemic is over. My job is waiting for me. That's awesome that they're holding your job for you, Mallory. I'm really glad to hear that, that that's going to work out for you. And, you know, um, the other thing about finding a job that's really tough, uh, Margaret says also New York's uh, DMV computer still offline can't book a road test. Wow, that's, that's a long time to be off. How long have they been offline now, Margaret? Uh, KS, uh, what if you're over 30? Is it still possible? Uh, KS, it is very much still possible to find a job. My friend Tim is here. is from uh, Drive Smart BC. Uh, if you want to know anything about road laws, traffic regulations, uh, traffic culture, uh, there's an excellent forum over on his website. And anything about you know legislation here in the province of British Columbia, definitely check out uh, Tim's website, Drive Smart BC, and some good research and other information over there as well. So. Uh, definitely head over there if you're living in the province of British Columbia. Uh, yeah, so I was asking Margaret about uh, still not able to book a uh, a driver's test there in Brooklyn and in the state of New York. Paco, I just got fired. Okay, so you're in need of a job. Excellent. We already covered that. Um, <clears throat> so the other the other story that I'll tell you here is Bill Walker who there's a there's a playlist here on the website uh, Bill came in and trained with me probably six years ago when I was still working at the driving school Bill finished on Thursday at the truck driving school got his license passed his driver's test for his class one license which is tractor trailer and the next Tuesday Bill was working in the oil fields in northern Alberta and that was what he wanted to do Bill had uh, goals and aspirations of driving truck in Northern Ontario to, or Northern British, get the right province here, Northern Alberta in the oil fields to make more money so that he could retire. And as he was fond of saying, you know, to drink a better grade of tequila uh, because his wife was from Mexico and they go down to Mexico every winter. Bill worked at one of the auto, uh, auto parts shops here in town as a counter person and he basically, every person, every customer that came into the shop, he basically said to them, listen, I'm going to drive truck in Northern Alberta. Do you know anybody that might be hiring? And 
that's how he found a job. He just kept talking to them, talking to people. And finally, one customer said to him, he said, listen, I know uh, my son works in the oil fields and he knows this company that's work looking for drivers and gave him. And so he got his phone number, gave him a call and they hired him over the phone for, straight out of truck driving school. And, uh, you know, there are heaps and heaps of class one uh, driving positions on Kijiji and those types of things. Unfortunately, lots of students who come out of truck driving school will get dismayed because many companies will say to them, listen, we need minimum two years experience. And then of course you're up against the old adage of you can't get experience you can't, without a job and you can't get a job without experience. So how do you do those two things? And <clears throat> you know, I was, I had coffee with an, another student of mine a couple of three weeks ago same thing. He said, you know, I had to put in my dues. I couldn't get a job driving a logging truck, which now he he drives a logging truck, Al. And he said, you know, you had to go in, you had to drive a box truck, you had to drive a garbage truck, you had to drive a dump truck in the summertime doing whatever you could to get a job as a CDL driver. Because these companies will not hire you straight out of truck driving school. You have to prove to them that you want to do the job. How are you going to do the job? So you have to be motivated. And as Goose said, you know, you got to start at A and you got to work through and you may not get a job until you get to the T's. Uh, same thing with me, right? I started on the East Coast and started working West. How are you going to do it? I mean, if you really want a job, whatever you need to do, you have to go back to school, you have to put in the time, you have to do the training, and then you have to get the job. And how do you get the job? Because it's really tough, right? And a lot of uh, you know, there's jokes about people who have degrees in philosophy or degrees in the arts and those types of things, and then they can't get a job when they finish, when they graduate from school. So then they got to do all these other things, right? Uh, the last thing I ever expected that I was going to be doing was, <clears throat> you know, running a business and having a YouTube channel teaching people how to drive with a doctor. You know, I thought that when I came out of university that, you know, the world, <laughs> it was all going to happen, Right skies were part manna would fall i would just everybody be knocking on my door looking for jobs and those types of things and it, it didn't happen it literally didn't happen and then i found out that when i went to the university uh i wasn't happy you know i didn't fit in there i didn't fit in with the culture and this is another reason why if there is a job that you want there is a career or profession that you want to move forward into or you're thinking that you want to change uh then Talk to people, figure out the pros, figure out the cons, because there's always pros and cons to every job. It's like this job that I have right now. You know, don't get me wrong, I love my job. I have great deal of flexibility in terms of the business that I'm running and those types of things. But let me tell you, there are some there are some cons to it, right? Trying to control the cash flow and trying to keep more money here as opposed to all going out. And you know, the last few months it feels like most of it's going out. However, you know, unfortunately, some of you are being laid off because of the pandemic and those types of things. You know, my business is still going and I'm very, very happy about that, that it is kind of recession pandemic proof. And there are a lot of jobs that are pandemic and recession proof. And it's the same thing with driving truck or driving bus. It's not for everybody. Right. And working for transit authorities and those types of things. You know, you work those split shifts. And, you know, there were a few times in the late 1990s, I mean, the two drivers that I trained who'd worked at the Transit Authority for a long time, uh, you know, a couple of times they said to me later when I was out of work, they said, oh, you know, there's lots of, we have job postings for, for transit drivers. But as soon as they told me that they had split shifts, I was like, no, I don't do split shifts. I come to work, <laughs> I do the work and then I go home and I don't come back to work. So for those of you who don't know what a split shift at a transit authority is, is that you come in in the morning, you work during the rush hour the in the morning for four hours, you go home for four hours, and then you come back in the afternoon and you work for another four hours. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I don't do that. If I go to work, I work and then I go home. <laughs> I don't come back. <laughs> uh JT says he doesn't know anybody who's a truck driver. Goose says he has a BA in philosophy. That's awesome. Nar just says uh, don't give up, and that's definitely you really do. And and just on that point, we've we've crossed that point a couple of times about not giving up in terms of looking for a job because it can be demoralizing, 
right? It can be really hard on your self-esteem because after three or four months, you're not getting any bites, you're not getting any interviews, you know, everybody's like, no, 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 no. That's really tough, okay? So you gotta figure out how to look after yourself, okay? Are you working out? Are you exercising enough, okay? Do you have a support group around you, your family, your spouse, your kids? Is everybody on board? Is everybody encouraging you and saying forward? Do you have a mentor, somebody that's gonna help you, uh, you know, to encourage you to make suggestions about how to change things slightly, people that will look at your resumes and say, hey, maybe you can tweak this or change that, those types of things. Uh, transferable skills, because you may be underselling yourself, right? Uh, it's like truck drivers. I'll, you know, I've, over the years I've looked at truck drivers' resumes and applications, and I, and you know, there'd be nothing on there in terms of truck driving, and it's like there's heaps of transferable skills you had, right? If you have a hobby at home on the weekend, you know, where you're building cabinetry and you're selling it out of the back of your garage, that's a skill set, right? Uh, if you worked at McDonald's for years and did customer service, that's uh, that's a transferable skill because you know lots of companies are looking for customer service and if you can do customer service you know and you can do it well they can teach you how to drive the truck and this was one of the things about my friend Bill Walker he very affable very conversational and really good with people and those types of things you know lovely guy they could teach him how to drive a truck that was easy that was the easy part you know getting along with customers and whatnot that was really the important part uh, zero eight split shifts are harder when I end up taking a nap and reach just in time for shift. <laughs> zero eight. Yeah, that would be, that would be my problem would be taking a nap and not waking up in time to go back to work. <laughs> and that's probably why I never did it. Okay. Uh, Jim Bob, uh, when I become a firefighter, I'm going to do my job, even if it means I get hurt. Uh, Jim Bob, you're probably not going to get hurt because you need to understand with firefighters now, they do not go into burning buildings. That's a complete and utter myth, okay? Uh, firefighters now, if the building is on fire, they contain the fire. They do not put the fire out. Uh, a couple of years ago, about four years ago, we had a fire here in Vernon. <laughs> it was, uh, they were roofing, it was a flat roof. Somebody left a torch on, they set the building on fire. It was a social services building behind a gas station. Firefighters showed up, contained the fire so it didn't go into the gas station, and it burned to the ground. I mean, it burned to the ground. There wasn't a wall standing the next morning. And that's essentially what firefighters do because it's too dangerous to send firefighters into a burning building. So they don't do it anymore. Okay? Uh, JT, I don't know any, anyone who's a truck driver, but uh, so this is the other thing. Uh, about truck drivers and have a look at Bill's story there in terms of being truck drivers and those types of things. Uh, one of the great things and one of the reasons that I encourage you to be a truck driver or to consider truck driving or a transit uh, bus driver, Greyhound bus driver, uh, as you know, I drove truck in the 1990s and I've never been out of work. I was never out of work. The only out of work truck driver is the truck driver that wants to be out of work. That was the only time that I was ever out of work as a truck driver. Uh, you know, and then I moved to Australia. Uh, I did a lot of research in terms of driving truck when I went to Australia because I was pretty sure that I was going to have to work a year before I went to university in Australia. And I did end up working a year. But by that time, I really had enough of driving truck. I went back and made a bunch of money. Uh, you're most welcome, Tim. Have a great night. Enjoy, enjoy your pasta, my friend. Uh, so I did a lot of research, uh, and when I left here in the late 1990s, I went back driving truck to make a bit of money before I left for Australia, and I was making 32 cents a mile, which, you know, was pretty decent money, especially if you were really humping, which I was. And then I looked at Australian truckies, and I looked at roads in Australia and those types of things, and they were paying 32 cents a kilometer, and I thought, 32 cents a kilometer versus 32 cents a mile... I thought, mm, that's that's pretty good. That's about a that's about a thirty percent increase in pay. And then, of course, I started really digging into it. And then I realized uh, you have to realize that I was running in the U.S. I'm running on interstates, and you can run on interstates for ten or twenty hours, <laughs> never never come off cruise on an interstate in the U.S. Uh, and uh, you can't do that in Australia. It's all two lane, what we call two lane skinnies. 
uh, up and down and around and through and up and down through towns and those types of things. And I realized very quickly that, you know, 32 cents a kilometer, you are not going to make a lot of miles in a day uh, driving in Australia. So I didn't. So I went off and drove coaches for a while. And it was a very interesting experience driving for Greyhound. It was a different learning experience. And I can remember when I first started driving coaches, the first couple of weeks, it was really hard <laughs> driving on a schedule where you left one place and you had to be at another place exactly three hours and 15 minutes later that was really tough uh, especially when you're running overnight uh, you know through the night and you know there were there were quite a number of nights that i'd be stopping in rest areas and everybody 55 people you know 50 people behind me all sleeping and i would get off the bus and run around the bus to try and stay awake <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, you didn't do that in a big truck. In a big truck, you know, if you had to stop and get a bit of kip, uh, you just climb in the bunk, get a, two hours of sleep, and then wake up and then carry on with your life. But you couldn't do that in the bus. You really had to, you know, keep to that schedule, which was a bit, uh, a bit challenging in the first three or four weeks before I became acclimatized to it and could really do it. All right, uh, Jim Bob, I've been watching videos from a YouTube channel called Firefighter Now, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jim Bob, I'd be interested to see that. Uh, are they, Jim Bob, are they telling you that they're going into into fires and those types of things? Fair and my friend. <laughs> uh, Fair and I don't want a job. I want to sit and sleep. And Fair and I, I, I totally agree with you. I said that to my business coach the other day. I hired a business coach for the for smart drive test, and I said to her, I said, listen. I, I don't want this job to have me have to be here. I said that's not a job. I said that's I said that's not a business. I said that's me being self-employed. I said I don't want to be self-employed. I want to Tim Ferriss this thing. I want to you know four-hour work week kind of thing. <laughs> I want to show up and tell other people how to do it. So yeah, uh, I'm on board with what what you want to do, Farron. I'm definitely on board with that. Uh, Mallory, I've learned a lot from watching your videos and have shared what I've learned uh, on my very own YouTube channel, my family and friends, and great job on the video with Nelson. Thank you so much, Mallory. Uh, I'm really hoping that's going to help out. I'm, I'm gonna, I've got the closed caption done now, and I'm going to put it up on the website, and that'll really help boost it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, because that will help to get it uh, found in Google as well as it just in YouTube as well because some of you may or may not know that YouTube is a search engine which is separate from Google which is interesting because Google owns YouTube <laughs> but YouTube and Google are separate search engines which is which is interesting right uh, enjoy the decline hey Rick I failed my driving test I feel like I let you down personally uh, Decline, you did not let me down in any any way, shape, or form, my friend, okay? Remember, fail just means first attempt in learning, all right? So you know what you need to do, and you're gonna. I'm very confident you're going to get it next time. So you didn't let me down, my friend, not at all, okay? So just keep going, and you're going to get your license. And if you need any help at all or you have any questions whatsoever about passing your driver's test, let me know, and I'll definitely help you out. Uh, JT, work at a mattress store. Do so, JT. You you do work at a mattress store, or you're suggesting that we work at a mattress store? Uh, Alder, you passed your driving test as well. That's awesome. Uh, that's really great. Congratulations on that. Uh, what did you do to celebrate, my friend? Jim Bob, when should you be signaling that you're about to turn at an intersection? Uh, Jim Bob, you should be signaling approximately half a block before the turn. So mirror signal, shoulder check, check approximately half half a block before the turn. Uh, Goose, when do you, when you do what you love, it's not work. And Goose, that's very true. Uh, you know, every once in a while you will grum and grumble and complain, but <laughs> we definitely love what we do. And, you know, I, I've been, I've been doing this teaching thing and driving my whole life. And this is really, you know, it's kind of interesting that I'm still doing it now. And now I'm doing it online and teaching online and helping people to pass a driver's test. Uh, JT, yes, definitely Spider-Man. Spider-Man is very cool, right? All this power. With great responsibility comes great power. You know, not just for superheroes, but also for a good saying in life. <laughs> Don't give up. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Jim Bob, you didn't tell me about the Firefighter channel. I wanted to know whether they went into the buildings on that channel or not. 
Uh, Epic, really excellent tips, Rick. And speaking of your first day as a truck driver, bus driver, will you be allowed to drive the route by yourself or have an experienced driver with you? Okay, so Epic, it's really gonna, that's, that's an excellent question. If it's a trucking company, you may have a mentor, they may have a mentor program that you go into and you may work with somebody else. If you're in a, if you're going to work for a transit bus authority, tra a transit authority, so, you know, if you're working in New York City and it's, you know, subways or buses or those types of things, you are definitely going to go through a training program. All of these city transit authorities all have training programs. You're going to have to go through the training program and the training program is probably going to be anywhere between uh, six to 12 weeks, depending on the different authorities. And I know with the, the London Transit Authority that I worked with, uh, their training program, I think was four to six weeks. Uh, depending on the driver and you went out and they worked with you on all the routes and those types of things. Now, you know, driving bus is a little bit different. And the same thing when I worked for Greyhound in Australia, uh, I was with another driver for a week, uh, you know, and then of course there was some coursework and those types of things that I had to do and whatnot. So uh, yeah, definitely if you're with a, a transit authority, you're definitely going to get training. Trucking companies, it's you know, it's from one end of the spectrum to the under the other end of the spectrum. Some trucking uh, companies, you're not going to get any training. They're going to throw you a set of keys and have fun. <laughs> you need to be in Chicago tomorrow at six o'clock at this address with this load, right? Uh, whereas others will put you into a mentor program for three months and you'll be with another driver and whatnot. So it's really going to depend on where you are. Okay. Uh, Rocky, I watched your video of personal protective equipment. I liked it, and I still do. Your video was so awesome. Uh, do not go to work without your PPE. That's right. <laughs> uh, that was that was a very long time ago. I did that video. That Rocky. That was probably one of the first videos I did on the channel. Uh, Jim Bob, it's a channel where a fighter fighter named Mike shows you how to become a firefighter successfully. Excellent. Okay, so he's not actually fighting fires. He's just showing you the path of doing that. And Jim Bob, is he also showing you, because uh, I know that some of the firefighters that I've trained to get their class three license here in British Columbia and other places, they go to a training facility in Texas. Is, is that one of the places that he's uh, showing you to do that? Okay. And there's another video to check out as well. Corey's put up there. Thanks for that, Corey. So awesome. So getting a job. And as I was saying previously about making sure that you have a support network around you, that you're eating well, uh, that you're showing up, uh, you know, get up in the morning, shave, comb your hair, put on nice clothes, those types of things. I was being very careful there about not saying put on your makeup because Margaret's here and we know how that that is. So just do your hair, comb your hair. <laughs> you don't have to do your hair. You know, but you gotta, you got, you can't, if you start showing up in track pants or pajamas, you know, like some people on Zoom meetings now, you know, they're looking nice on the top and they're wearing track pants and those types of things. Yeah, okay, that's all cool and whatnot, but you, you gotta figure out how to do this long term because it's not a sprint. You know, you may luck out and get a job in two weeks, but the, the, re, the likelihood is that you're not gonna find a job in two weeks. You have to follow up. You have to make a lot of calls. You have to put in resumes. Resumes have to be tailored for the company that you're going to be applying for and those types of things because it's it's tough and it's a lot of work and it's it can be, you know, because I've done this and I've got into, you know, been unemployed for six months and looking for work and applying for a job and uh, it's, it's, it's a bummer. And it's after six months, it's really tough to keep going and really find that energy to keep yourself going so you don't you gotta um, <clears throat> um you gotta have that support network around you and you gotta have that ability to have that mental health okay <laughs> margaret you can get into trouble for telling a prospective employee to wear makeup i bet you you can margaret and i would never go there but you know we can we can dance around and joke about it and those types of things uh, JT, I don't, uh, you don't get the makeup joke. Yeah, Margaret doesn't wear makeup. And I've, I've said a couple of times to get up and put your makeup on. And Margaret's told me that she doesn't wear makeup. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> no, no, Margaret, that's not true at all. There's lots of women who don't wear makeup. And then on the other hand, there's some men who do wear makeup. So we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll just leave it there. 
Ah, uh, and Jim Bob said the facility is called a f uh, fire academy. Okay, excellent. Uh, Khaled, uh, any tips to improve resume? Yes, definitely. Have a look at uh, the example of my resume over on the Smart Drive Test website. And uh, Corey's put that link up for you. I think if Corey, could you just stick that link up again? That would be really great. Okay. Uh, Andre, hey Rick, do you have a video on squeezing through double parked cars? I feel more comfortable passing cars uh, in my school bus than regular cars. <laughs> I think it's just due to the familiarity though. Okay, yeah, and it, Andre, if you're doing it in a school bus, then you're just going to do it in your car. It's just a matter of slowing down so that you have enough time to observe, maneuver the vehicle, and to, you know, avoid if something goes wrong, right? And uh, so have a look at all of that. So Corey's put up the, uh, the link for the resume and cover letter that you can have a look at that. So Goose says, my wife doesn't wear makeup either. So there you go. So Goose's wife, Margaret, doesn't wear makeup, and I'm sure there's a ton of other... I'm just, I'm on a slippery slope here and I'm just going to stop. <laughs> uh, Epic, uh, speaking of some transit agency, they do have an in-house CDL school for prospective bus drivers. One of those is the New Jersey Transit Network, uh, Newark, New Jersey, regarding bus driver school. Should I do that or CDL? Uh, Epic, I would probably suggest and counsel you to start with the school bus thing. And then if you wanted to move up from the school bus thing, then you could pursue the truck driving after that. But the great thing about most bus companies as opposed to most trucking companies, most bus companies will train you and give you training, which is a really good thing in terms of uh, learning how to drive CDL vehicles. Uh, Jim Bob, do emergency vehicles have to stop for school buses? Uh, yes, they do, Jim Bob, if they're not responding to an emergency. Now, if they were responding to an emergency, then the emergency vehicle obviously... You know, lights and sirens are only a request for right of way. So, you know, obviously if there's a bus with lights flashing and, you know, children are getting off or passengers are getting off because they're not always children, they can be teenagers too, uh, then obviously the bus, the, the emergency vehicle would have to give way to the bus because there's, there's a, a high probability that there would be a crash and there would be pedestrian fatality. So, you know, that's really something that would have to, you would kind of figure out in the moment, right? Uh, Kenji, I drive security patrol at night. Awesome. And uh, how is it? You're still working with the pandemic and those types of things. Uh, Margaret, for NYC jobs, check the uh, Transforms website. They post info about exams and training. Excellent. So there's lots of places there. Uh, see, there we go. Now, Margaret started a whole movement with this, this makeup. So we got Goose's wife, Janet doesn't wear makeup, Margaret doesn't wear makeup, and, you know, that's that's awesome. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm on a slippery slope, and I'm just going to leave all this alone. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and JT thinks that lotion is technically makeup. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but, you know. We all need a bit of moisturizer. <laughs> so, excellent. So, looking for a job. If you're looking for a job, follow some of these tips and techniques. Uh, go to some of the community social services in and around your neighborhood and towns. They will have uh, job boards up. They'll have people there that will be able to look at your resume, give you information about writing cover letters, uh, filling out applications and those types of things and help you with all of that. And there we go. See, Mallory doesn't wear makeup either. So we've got like four, half a dozen people here who don't wear makeup. Okay. So all of that. Uh, Abassi, it's going well. Thank you so much. We're just wrapping up for the night. Uh, if you have any questions about finding a job, a driving job, starting a CDL career, uh, drop me a note down in the comments there. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. We'll help you out. Uh, if you have a test coming up this week, good luck on that. And if you passed your driver's test in the last week or so, congratulations on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Don't go right now because somebody's like here. <laughs> Being weird. <laughs> yeah. I am so annoying. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, you are annoying. <laughs> yeah. And you just <gasps> took your nose off on the back of my head. 
<laughs> my chin. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. break my chin again. Uh, okay, you don't. I'm gonna break Shh. my chin. I'm gonna break my chin again. All right, there you go. I'm okay, I think I'm. I think you took me out there. It's a good thing you didn't. I didn't pass out. I think <laughs> I'm gonna break my chin again. You broke my chin. Yeah, you broke your chin on the back of my head. <laughs> my hard head. Then the second time. Yes! Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Have a great night. Bye. All the best. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>